friends welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Amanda so in today's what's for dinner video I've got two super easy delicious crock pot meals for you these were all dump and go they were five ingredients super super simple and lots of flavor in them too and then I've also got a coffee cat Starbucks lemon loaf recipe for you I think you're really going to enjoy that one it just really made me feel like spring is on the way it'll be here before we know it now, if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. I do all kinds of recipe videos, what's for dinners. It's all about the food here. So if that sounds like something you might like, make sure you also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any time I post a new video. I'm always planning new recipes to make for y'all and to share with y'all. So if you're excited to get into this video, give me a thumbs up, but let's go ahead and get into these recipes. Let's go ahead and get started on our crock pot pork tenderloin with gravy. This is such a super simple dump and go kind of recipe. I did decide to add onions myself, but you don't have to do that. And I used unsalted cream of chicken. Thanks to Andrea at Foodimentary Adventures in Food. She used this in one of her videos. And as someone who watches my sodium, I was so excited to see unsalted cream of chicken soup. So I got some in my last grocery order. I'm also using a couple packs of chicken gravy mix. I used the reduced sodium ones. And we're also going to add some chicken broth. This is all being added to our two pork tenderloins that we've got in our crock pot. Now you could also stir all this mixture up in a bowl and dump it in. That would be fine too. I just went ahead and wanted to stir it in the pot. I didn't want to dirty another bowl. And that worked out fine. I, as it was cooked a little bit, I came in and kind of stirred everything around again just to make sure everything was good and kind of mixed together. So you might want to do that if you just mix it in the pot. But this worked perfect. And you can cook this either on high for three hours or on low for six hours. I did on high. And uh, either way, you know, you should be good there. And we're just going to go ahead and get started on making some mashed potatoes. I've got to where I cut my potatoes a little differently i used to put them in big chunks but i watch Colorado valley cooks and she cuts them like kind of more thinner and they actually cook more quickly and they're supposed to mash better too so i always have good luck when i do those and it helps them get done a little faster too uh, and so we're just going to of course boil those and once they're you know done then we're going to make our mashed potatoes i just do half and half and butter the half and half seems like it really makes it like help it be a little more creamy and so i like the consistency better and it seems like they reheat better. I've noticed that too. So I pretty much try to stick with that when I make the uh, mashed potatoes because they just always seem to turn out well. I love potatoes just about any form. Anyways, let me know down in the comments before if you're a potato fan as well. I've just got some corn there, some green beans. I just cook that until the water evaporates out of it and put some seasonings and butter and stuff like that in it. And now here's our pork and gravy. I just love how the gravy is already made in here. All you have to do is get the pork out and you've got all that good gravy ready to go. And you can see this is just like falling apart tender. It just got so nice and tender in here. You could definitely shred this up if you wanted to and just like serve it like that. I went ahead and just pulled the pork tenderloins out and then served, you know, kind of let everybody pick their pieces of that. And then, um, you know, everybody can put their gravy on top of the pork and the mashed potatoes and everything. That gravy was so very good, though. It was and so easy. I mean, it was already made in the pot after it was cooked. This whole meal was so delicious. I will say, though, I should have had some rolls on hand because this would have been perfect like with some rolls. It almost could even like make like a hot roast beef sandwich, only like, you know, pork instead with this because... It kind of gave me those, you know, roast beef kind of vibes with the gravy and the tenderness of the pork and everything. So very delicious and you cannot beat how easy it was. And I'll have all these recipes linked below. So next we have our five ingredient white chicken chili. So I had some chicken I had cooked up the night before and I thought this would be a perfect way to use this. I've made a white chicken chili before. But it was like a creamy one. It was totally different. And this was like so few ingredients and so easy that I thought, okay, I've got to try this and see if this is actually like tasty or not. And you could also use rotisserie chicken in this. Uh, obviously, if you want to use canned chicken or anything like that to make this like super easy where you didn't have to pre-cook anything ahead of time. Those would all be great options too. So I've got my chicken cut up. We're going to go ahead and just start throwing everything in the pot. This really is like a dump and go recipe. I ended up using about probably three cups of chicken. I felt like that was probably pretty good. I think I ended up with like maybe four cups total when I cut those two chicken breasts up. And then we're going to add in our beans drained and rinsed. I use cannellini and great northern. And then we're going to add in some salsa verde. 
and some chicken broth and some seasonings. Now, the seasonings that called for was just cumin, but I went ahead and added some onion powder and garlic powder as well. I feel like you can't go wrong with adding things like that too. So always, you know, adjust a recipe as you see fit. Add something you might like or take something away that you don't like. And now we're just going to give it a stir and put the lid on it and cook it. Now this can cook on, you know, high heat or low heat, depending on, you know, how quickly you need it done. I cooked mine on high for about three hours, I think it was. And you could also use raw chicken in this if you wanted to. Just make sure you cook it until it's done. And then you could just take it out, shred it, and, you know, put it back in. So either way would work fine, however you'd like to do it. This is a great way to use leftover chicken, though, if you want to kind of do something different. But y'all, this was so very good. I just topped it with like some sour cream, some avocado, and some tortilla strips. I couldn't believe like how easy this was and how delicious it was. So highly recommend. So now we're going to get started on our Cobbycat Starbucks Lemon Loaf. I've actually never had this before, but it seems pretty popular. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had it. I'm just going to go ahead and get started with zesting my lemon with my microplane grater. And then getting that juice out of that lemon as well. You just need like two tablespoons of lemon juice. I thought this would just be such a fun thing to make because, you know, spring is right around the corner and I felt like this would be so, like, such a fresh taste with the lemon and everything. So I was really excited to try this recipe. Now in this bowl, we've got some baking powder, baking soda, a little bit of salt, and some flour, and we're just mixing that together well. And then we're going to start uh, our butter and sugar mixture in this bowl. Now, you do need to cream the butter and sugar for about three minutes. Uh, so you could definitely use a stand mixer if you wanted to instead of doing it by, you know, like with a hand mixer. And once we get that cream together, we're going to add in our eggs one at a time and beat well in between, you know, each one of those. And then add in our vanilla extract, lemon extract, our lemon juice, and our lemon zest. So we definitely have our lemon flavor covered in this bread. And it really did come across really well. Like not too much. It was just like just enough in my opinion. And we really loved this. We're also going to make an icing or a, I guess it would be like a drizzle or whatever on top of it too. Uh, here in just a little bit. So that was really uh, yummy on it as well. So how many of y'all are ready for spring? I just, I don't know. When I made this, I really felt like it was such a pretty blue sky day out there. And when I was cooking this, I thought, man, this really just makes me think of like springtime. I just love those spring days where you have that clear blue sky and the temperatures aren't so hot yet to where you can kind of enjoy, you know, being outside. So um, this, like I said, just made me think a lot of spring. So once we get all these incorporated really well, we're going to go ahead and add in our flour and I used sour cream. The recipe actually calls for buttermilk, but um, it said sour cream works too. In the comments, some people said they actually upped the sour cream a little bit. So I did up the sour cream. I used a half a cup. I will always put the changes I make in the notes down in the description box. So watch for that. So we did half the flour, half the sour cream, mix well, half the flour or the rest of the flour and the rest of the sour cream and mix that well. And once you get that all mixed, you're, you know, ready to put this in your grease loaf pan, or you can line it with parchment paper if you'd like to do that. That helps too. Um, now, you could add poppy seeds. I saw that also in the comments. Um, I did not do that, but you could definitely add that because I know lemon poppy seed bread, you know, that's really popular too. So once we get this in our loaf pan, we're just going to go ahead and bake it. It's going to bake at 350 degrees for about, you know, 50 minutes. You definitely want to keep an eye on it and just check it. Try to catch it before you over bake it. But look how golden brown this looks. This was just such a delicious like bread recipe. So now we're going to get started on our icing drizzle. We're just going to mix together some powdered sugar, some lemon juice, and some half and half. Now, I always caution y'all here. Add your liquid ingredients slowly here. You can always add more liquid, but you can't take it away. And I swear, every time I try to add more powdered sugar to compensate for too much liquid, it ends up just not ever getting the right consistency. And you do want this consistency a little thicker. That way it doesn't, you know, just fall off your bread, basically. And so you can kind of see the consistency. I get this too. And then that way you kind of know what you're looking for there. And you could even make it a little thicker if you wanted to. It's just, you know, kind of personal preference. So once we've got this combined, we're going to go ahead and put it on our lemon loaf. And the icing just made it even better that it was just so good because it has that lemon juice in there. So like I said, this was such a fresh tasting, uh, you know, quick bread that you can make. Highly recommend this recipe. 
And I don't know about y'all, but I just love making like little quick breads like this. I just find it fun to try new recipes, new flavors and everything like that. I've even got one for like a, it's like a peanut butter chocolate chip. I think a loaf is what it was. And that one sounded really good too. But thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And make sure to turn on that notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. I'm always trying to plan yummy things for y'all. I hope you have a blessed day wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.